Carlos. What we're doing with these movers, Tai Chi, Steiner, pull it back in, pull the hand back in. Uh, yoga, Tai Chi, Steiner system, the eurythmic uh, method of, of physicality, is plays sit there on paper, right? And they're 2,000, 3,000 years old, and they're exciting and whatever. But we can never understand what the Greeks felt by seeing this stuff on stage, right? By, by going to the vent, by smelling their neighbors next to them, the kinesthetics of all of this experience. So what we have with our new technologies, work that out, Peng. stick out your left hand. Far out, man. Is scripts are cool, but scripts are inert, right? We're trying to reinvest this with the body, the actor's body, and now the, the, the performer and the audience's body. That's why going to the theater is fun. We get to, to sit there in the audience and experience what the audience is saying or doing. I want, Peng, for you to give us a, a kind of a basic vocabulary of Tai Chi and try and listen to what the sound and the image is doing. Put your hands out. Pull them down to your knees and watch it. And look, the contrast happens. This is what I want you to do. When I asked you to get your Jung archetype generator, I did bird and girl. Basic. They're, they're like eight minute films, but move your hand, hands around and show them what the contrast does. Extremely cool. That's, I, took, I took a little bit of some of my favorite um, I, I, uh, iTunes stuff, some delicious tracks of ambient and translate beats, and I stuck it to the front part of these films. I want you guys to do that too, because we listen to this stuff. Bend your knees. Put your hands out to the side. Excellent. So the issue would be how much of this is about calibration, how much of this is about classical Tai Chi or classical Steiner, or are you doing your yoga well? We're going to see each person move. Give us two or three uh, Tai Chi moves. And let's listen to the music. A little close. Now do that in the side. Turn to the side, 90 degrees to this. This side. Okay, hold one hand out. Do it now. We lost. Oh, this is cool. Dude. That's far out, man. Let's give Penfei a hand. Let's, let's go. Lucy, you studied under the Steiner School, and they called them Eurythmic. Eurythmy. Listen up. Listen up. We have our images, which is prepared, what I called uh, Jungian archetypes. They blend into each other. Whatever. For, for like the psychic, they're kind of like a Rorschach test, right? What are we seeing? What are we doing? Where are we conjuring it? Lucy, give us two or three things about this method. Um, so there's like different movements for different sounds. And um, so like this is like, uh, like Like the Tai Chi, was there a lot of forward motion, or is it using yeah, the side? Like this is like R. Oh, cool! Listen to that. And then this is like this is like L. This is L. So while you were learning how to read, you had to shape the letters with your body. No, well, we like learned this before we learned how to read, so it was like familiarizing ourselves with different sounds. Wow. Different. Do they relate to vowels over consonants, or what? Is there a there's logic? Like a, there's like a Sound for, or like a movement for each sound. And then there's also just like, like music you can do with me too as well. What kind of music? Like this music? No, like classical. Ah, but this is pretty trippy, right? Yeah. We used to have to dance to the possible canon and I hated it. That's a little kitschy. <laughs> but dancing to this 100% freakified like music, man. Yeah. That's cool. I would have done this. Okay, now hold it, hold it. Give us a couple really elegant moves as you're exploring 
both the vocabulary, eurythmy, and explore the, what you know of this program and the music so far. There's a lot of side action. You can actually do little motions to modulate space. Back way up and let's hear it. Slows way down to that David Lynchian dim dimension. Dude, I see money signs. Now back it up and give a slow spooky. That's really slow and spooky. Slow it way down. Play one side and then the other. Get away from symmetry. That's boring. Asymmetry is where it's at. Get ready, yoga specialists. <laughs> Lucy, what could you do with a program like this? And what just this whole idea that it's generating these so-called thousands of Jungian archetypes, melding them together. What's 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 this doing to both the mind and the body? Um, it's showing you that the mind and the body are connected and that Surprise, surprise. Yeah. You think kids could have a good time with this? Yeah. Hell yeah, ka-ching, ka-ching. Okay, Lucy, everyone get Lucy a hand. <laughs> Yoga one. Calibrate, calibrate. Move your hands into silence. Shh, shh, shh. Dead still. Okay. Yoga, what are the grammars of yoga? Why do people, why is yoga a craze? your hands out. Bring them back in. Now talk without your hands. Move center center with the piece a little better. Okay, bring your hands in. Okay. Why don't we keep, oh, I think you're over. Move over to your left. Your left. Okay. Two or three grammars about yoga. Why do people like it, do it, exercise with it? Okay, talk that way. Okay. It's like relaxing and it like, well, I did Bikram yoga, so it's like... That's the hot yoga. Listen up. Listen up. And like, you sit in a room that's like over 100 degrees. Like an Why? Because it like, it like cleanses you. Like you sweat so much, it just cleanses everything out of you. Give us, give us uh, one, an asymmetrical standing move. What about the one grabbing your feet, or your back foot? Okay. See what sound it makes. Don't fall, whatever you do. Again. Again? On the other side. I don't know if I can do it. Come on. That one was always cool. <laughs> Excellent. Give every, everyone give Christina a big hand. Now, Emily. Calibrate. Quickly calibrate. Better calibrate. Move forward. Move backward. Move to the side. It just hates you. Dude, hates you tried this before. Go. Um, I spent most of my childhood outside, even though it was like freezing. Riding horses, skating, playing yeah, hockey. We didn't have like TV, so. Cool. So that was underprivileged. All right. So your yeah, parents. So your parents said no TV, no tube for our well, kids. I mean, like we had like five channels. But they were like all mostly like adult shows. So I didn't oh, really watch okay. It. Oh God, David. <laughs> give give this guy but semaphore. And then like as I became older, like I lost, I didn't have any interest in watching it because like I didn't have it when I was growing up. Run, out. Jones, run. So, uh, pull, put one hand out. See if you're still calibrated. I'm yeah, you are. Uh, move over a little bit. Yeah, you're on. Pull the hands in. Okay, now why did you get into yoga? Um, I needed to stretch more. <laughs> That's pretty much why I got into yoga. But you, y'all are young. You know, old guys like me say, "Oh, we need, really need to stretch." Why, 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 why is um, 
Why do you think, Emily, that that Americans, very Cartesian people, are getting back into realizing they have a body, eating better, exercising? Because um, the generation before, I, not I'm eating red meat sometimes. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I am pescatarian, but um, so I don't really know what that whole part. But um, when you exercise and like eat right, it makes you feel better. So, what about cognition? You're, you guys have got to cram it in. I know this campus really loves their Adderall and Ritalin and all that, all those enhancers that help them study better. How is a good workout a great aid to study? Um, it gives you endorphins, so then you have more energy. You're more up, right? You're more, so this whole, the generation before us, actually before me, that's porking out, getting, you know, driving cars, eating bad food, processed corn syrup and everything, processed food and all of that crap, that's reversing, right? Now, how do you see this? In, put, put your left hand out. You on? You're on both of them. I'm on both of them. There you are. Let me hit full screen. And all of you guys, I want you to... Move, move back in space. Very cool. What do you think the music means? Hold your hands up. Keep moving this space around. That's pretty spooky. Move back even further. If I sold this, am I going to scare young children with this software? The Jungian R type genera? That's intended value. Um, well, it depends on what kind of kids they are. I mean, if they're mature, hip kids, kids, they would love it. If they're dorks, they would hate it, right? Simple. Move it around, move it around, move, move, flow that space, flow that, um, there's this bird. Do you think the pitch changes are bugging a Western mind, a Western sensibility? Veronica. Yeah, oh, thank you for the answer. I should ask Jones, what do you think the value of this is in Taiwan? Valuable. Okay. Like the multimedia thing Thanks, Joan. Let's X equal X. Okay. Um, so, Emily, just finish off with a couple moves. Right. Standing moves. Okay. So. Listen up. Okay, that's silence. That's moving in. Extra cool. Can you try that on the side? What kind of what kind of sound would we get sideways view? Now it's reading both your hands, so one hand has disappeared. See, now they've showed up again. Oh, this is excellent. Dude, love the chi flow, man. Move it way back, get a spookier, extra spooky. Industrial, man. Now move it way forward, and then we're going to have Bollywood. And there you have the bird. What? And give Emily a hand. Yeah. And go. Now don't be upstage. And move fluid motions. Decisive fluid motions. What art thou there? Speak. What manner of man art thou? That art thyself a man. Fluid with the hands, the, the muscles, fluid. Fingers out. Don't be sawing the air. Be fluid with the hands. That's cool. Extremely cool. Continue. Bring it in towards silence by bringing it in. Continue. Pardon him, fair Tamandra. I don't know the rest of this line. A little louder. For he suffered many great things, and is incredibly miserable, and has retreated to the wilderness in order to make himself feel better and wallow in his pain. Oh, trippy, huh? That's hard beat. Bend your knees and then bring the sound, the contrast down. Now back up a little bit and continue with your lines. Uh, Timon died at the end. Louder. Timon died at the end. And here is his epilogue, or sorry, his epitaph that he wrote himself. Or 
some reason. Continue. It's unclear really how he died. He just sort of died as if his pain was too much for Shakespeare had run out of use for him. Oh, I love your improv. Keep it going. To be honest, a lot of the stuff in Shakespeare narratively does not quite make sense. For instance, why did Romeo and Juliet fall in love so incredibly fast? Are we really supposed to believe that that was true love? Because it just sounds like a couple of stupid teenagers getting together. Okay, make it sinister. Yeah, if you ask me, the man... Hands back, ride, behind you. But his narratives did not always cohere, cohede, become cohesive. And... See